Let's go to Parliament. Now, the Electoral Commission says that it, it would take a final decision on the voters' register by the end of this month. The Special Committee on the Register is expected to submit a report by next week. The uh, chairperson of the Commission was in Parliament to brief the House ahead of the 2016 general elections. The Commissioner tells us that in 2008, the expenditure, the total expenditure on the elections was $133 million. Well, the, at the time, the voting for place was about uh, $11 million, right? So that, that indeed translated into uh, about $12.30 30 cents per head. $12.30 per head. Mr. Chair, that indeed, that figure was good because the average for Africa is $13 per capita per head. Now, enter 2012. As we have been told, it shot up to 267 million. We are coming to 2016. And the figure that is being given to us is 269. The 269, if you are using a voting populace of about 15.2 million, that is going to be outrageous. I've told you. And this nation should be careful. You are telling us that the voting population is going to be... I'm addressing the chair. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman it, is, it is a very dangerous thing that is proposing to us. Because the population of this country extrapolated from 2010 into 2017 will be 27.3 million. And your 15.7 million, which you keep bandying about, will then tell us that the voting population will be 15.7 percent. Already the 14.2, which gave us about 14.6 uh, um, percent, became a subject of dispute. Now you are saying that you are taking it to 15.7 million. To give us 15.7 percent, 15.7 percent of the voting population, what does it? Okay, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chairman, we should be careful with the figure that the, this commissioner is coming. Honourable, up. Honourable Minority Leader, your point has been well made. They will have the opportunity to respond. And we have been told that if you are going to do a read registration, the amount involved is going to be around 900 million. The 900 million then is going to give us something using the current rate about about 234 million dollars which will then give us about 15 dollars per capita now plus the 17 will take it to over 32 dollars per capita it doesn't happen anywhere in africa the use of technology technology comes at a very high cost we have a biometric um, register it fits into a data center that is managed. We have the VMS, which resides at every district office. We have wide area network costs. We have the biometric verification device. Cost of technology is huge, and that's why you'd see a major leap in the cost of our elections from 2008, $133 million, to 2012, $267 million. And it's only a $2 million increase, even though we've increased the number of polling stations from 2012 to 2016. But there's also a lot of other things we do in Ghana, and it's simply because of the lack of trust in our political system. So there are a lot of costs that are carried by that lack of trust, and also costs that we carry because we want to ensure a very inclusive democracy. So for instance, even though we have a biometric verification device, we are still spending money on indelible ink as a parallel verification system. This is expensive, but it's something we have to do just to manage public perception and build trust. We train political party agents in Ghana. This doesn't happen in most of the other countries in the sub-region that we're comparing ourselves to, and it's a very high cost. We print registers for political parties and candidates, and it's a very liberal democracy, so we have large numbers of independent candidates and political parties. This is a cost that we carry as a commission. We print guidelines to political party agents. Again, this is a cost. We gazette polling stations and constituency election results, we've been asked to do that. That comes at a cost. We print tactile ballots and aids for the visually impaired 
to enable them vote independently, and we train them on how to use the tactile ballot. We set up polling stations and registration centers at our prisons because the Supreme Court says that prisoners in Ghana have a right to vote. This doesn't happen in a lot of other West African countries. We are going into an automated electronic transmission system. That is a cost. We distribute tamper-proof evidence for all candidates. We give the facility of early voting to media, to security personnel, to election officials. We are perhaps the only country in the sub-Saharan in sub Africa to have applied biometric and voter verification technology at the same time. We are the only country that have such a robust IPAC, RIPAC, and DPAC. And then we have a very inclusive process for all our stakeholders, people with disabilities, um, civil society organizations, um, faith-based organizations, community-based organizations. All this inclusiveness comes at a cost. And it is also what makes our election system and our democracy the envy of other countries in sub-Saharan region. Madam Charlotte said there, uh, reacting to uh, the concerns by the minority leader uh, of the increase in how much uh, it will cost Ghana to conduct uh, 2016 elections per head. Now, let's shift to the issue of uh, the uh, energy sector, the Ameri plan. Now, revelations this week that government contract with Ameri may, not have, uh, may have been inflated by some 290 million has triggered uh, a debate. Now, the deal worth uh, $510 million for five years is expected to produce uh, 250 megawatts of power. Now, the power ministry has denied uh, reports making uh, rounds, but the controversy won't go away. Tonight, my guest is um, a member of parliament for uh, Damongo and also the vice chair of the Mines and Energy uh, Committee of Parliament, Adam Mutawakilu. Well, I'm grateful for your time tonight. Thank you very much. Mm. Uh, before we talk about this, the, the, the EC chair was in the house today, and uh, uh, he, she uh, counteracted the concerns that uh, uh, the cost for the elections was uh, 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 too huge. How did this sit with Parliament, I mean, throughout the, the, the conversation between the EC chair and members of the house? Thank you very much, and good evening to our cherished viewers, mm. and more especially the good people of Damango constituency. It was very important that uh, the EC briefs on preparation towards 2016. Right. We don't need to wait until last minute, then set issues that are concerned to members and the general public are taken into consideration. So it was very, very important, mm. and she did very well, yes. And we hope that before 2016, we'll have several encounters, we encounter with her. And it was, people actually raised pertinent issues. One of them was uh, up north, some of the constituencies are so wide that during the rainy season, you have to cross rivers to cut people. So when it is in December 7th, it's easy by then. It was the better because the dry season, right. But in November 7th, there will still be a lot of water. And all these things are information they have to pick on board and maybe to, to be able to address them to ensure that uh, legible voters who are willing to vote mm. gets the opportunity to vote. So it was a healthy conversation, I guess. Yes, it very, was very, very, very healthy. Grateful. Now, let, let's go back to this issue. And uh, as to when it will go away, uh, the accusations, the counter-accusations, and even Parliament being accused that uh, uh, the House might not have done due diligence. Now, let's start from here. Could the House have just sat down for the deal if it was not worth it to go through? Is that what members did? No. We did a lot of work. We considered a lot of options mm. and finally settled on the BOOT. That is the build, own, operate, and transfer. Uh, when the document uh, agreement was laid before us, it was referred by Mr. Speaker to the committee. We mm. had the opportunity to study it first mm. before we invited the Minister of Power and by then, uh, ASAP 
African Center for Energy Policy had already raised some issues in respect to the VOOT, indicating right. that it will cost Ghana $700 million. So when we met, we discussed it, and we asked them to provide us possible options that we could go through. So the first one was outright purchase. It became clear that we don't have the money to go and buy it. That means we have to go and borrow. And if you borrow, there will be cost of borrowing the price. That is the interest. Right. So we said, do the analysis of it and let's have it. Second was rental. That is, you go, you go and rent it, come and use it for five years, and after which they take back they the plant. They take back their, their plant. Yes. So we asked them to do analysis of that. And the third one was the BOOT. And they did the analysis. We gave them some days. They came back. Mm. And when we look at the cost of uh, borrowing, and they did the analysis for five years where we repay, it was $411 million. Then rental was $471 million. And then BOOT is $510 million. Now, if you look on the face of it, you say, okay, let's borrow. Let's, because that, that, that's because the that is the lowest. The three. Yes. Yeah. But if you look at what we are going through, and now consider the time lag before the equipment will come for it to start powering. We know very well that 2014 alone, we lost $2 billion as a result of load shedding. If you put it into months, that means that every month we are losing about $167 million. Mm. And those, they are laying off their Ghanaians, you know? Every Ghanaian and every responsible leader will wish that all his people are getting, uh, employed, getting very well paid, because pay you get, the economic activity boost. With the borrowing, we will have the plan somewhere April next year. So that means from there we will lose one sixty seven million dollars up to April next year. So despite the fact that four hundred and eleven million uh, is uh, uh, the lowest uh, the lowest the time it the will committee take. was interested in the time the, the yeah. equipment was going to come in. Very, very important. Because we are losing money every month one hundred and sixty seven million because we Every don't have enough uh, because we don't power. have adequate power and this is this one if it is just ordinary money going people are being laid off and that affect families as well we scrutinize the item one by one so we thought that if the plan will come in april multiply 167 times four that is january to april mm -hmm. That is over $640 million of economic value lost. With the BOOT, by December we have it, by January it starts generating, adding some megawatts. So you realize that there will be some savings, or businesses can now start recruiting and increase economic activities. Mm. We look at the item by item, one of the items in the BOT was the cost of 10 gas turbines, the turbines. And it was $220 million, frankly. But that alone cannot generate power. We need the balance of plants. That is the transformer, the switch gear, and many other components. That must come before it can generate. So when you just mentioned 220 million, we will get it. No. There are more to it. So this is what informed the, the choice of uh, the BOT. Yes. So we look at the balance of plants and look at all that before we settled on BOT. The, the, the other one we look at was the tariff, uh, applicable tariff. Okay. Quickly, before I bring in uh, uh, the member of parliament for uh, if Jack Habren North, he is listening into the yeah. conversation. He will, he will join us. We now look at the applicable tariff. Mm. Is it because when it is BOT, are we charging such that we ripped off Ghanaians? We look at it, it was 14.5918 cents per kilowatt hour 
which is within the acceptable range mm. by PURC. In fact, it's lower than some of the IPPs we have. Sure. Yes. This 14.5918 cents, after five years, will take up what we call the recoverable capital charge. So it will drop. So that means 4.17 will be off because by then we would have paid for the equipment and the property becomes ours. So the applicable tariff will drop to about 10.17 cents per kilowatt hour. When and that's then mm, we okay, will operate it for another 15 years. Mm. Another issue was local content. If they come, they will operate maintenance, everything. When they go, how sure are we that our people can manage it? And the agreement says five staff of VRA will be attached to them. To go through. So same. that within the five years, they would have acquired the necessary skills so that when they are gone, they should be able to run. And in one of the clauses, it was indicated clearly that for the cost of constructing the platform, Ghana will have to do it. It is in the agreement. We asked the Minister of Energy, that is power, right. and VRA, go back and get the estimate. They went and brought the estimates. We look at it and we say, as a committee, after the construction, we will let you come and account for it to see whether you, have, you are within the... Uh, estimate in which you have given us. And they are still doing the construction. So we actually considered it very well. There's no any shady deals in it. What There's is no the cause of deal. the misunderstanding that is happening? I think um, people look at it from, if we buy, it's 220,220 mm. million. And they think that that is the only cost, cash. If you have the cash, you buy 220. But as Ghanaians, most of us go through high pitches. Let's just if you go through high pitches, you see that it won't be the same when you go for high pitches and then when you go and buy with cash. Okay. We should So it was actually scrutinized, there was no problem, and I think it is better to go B O O T than the than others that we are talking about. Let me speak region. to the Member of Parliament for a Fija uh, Kwabre North constituency, Honorable William Oyurekwedu. He says he was listening in and uh, he's uh, not ready to speak to me. Honorable, uh, grateful you stayed that you part of the show. Thank you very much. All right. Now, uh, sure, uh, you had the uh, Vice Chair of the Committee on Mines and Energy and uh, uh, saying that in fact, the House or the committee did a thorough job. Uh, the House uh, as a whole also did uh, its job. And so uh, what they decided on is the best option for, for Ghana. Why is the minority calling for the contract to be brought back to Parliament? Well, thank you very much indeed. And um, good evening to your cherished viewers. Mm. Basically... Um, I couldn't hear very much what my colleague was saying. Okay. But the facts are as follows. When the ministry came before the, uh, the, uh, the committee, we, some of us, haven't perused the document they put before us, thought that Ghana would get better value for money if we could raise our own money to purchase the machines ourselves and a whole lot of um, um, reasons were given by the ministry why that was not a good idea so like um, I think the chairman probably said we asked them to go back and come back uh, go and come back with better particulars yeah. they came back and gave some um, they did some um, comparative analysis at the time we were saying that the machines I and mean, uh, if we were to have them made for us would have cost us 220. They came back that according to their sourcing, it was 411. Mm. We disagreed. And then they gave also that if you were to, like, I think my, my, my vice chairman has gone through all the comparative analysis. Exactly, so he has. He more, has. More yeah. your, view, uh, your viewers with that. Yeah. But the bottom line is that today, um, a couple of years ago, the ministry came up with a statement 
admitting to the 220 that they did not agree to. And further, gave the impression that the 520, uh, 510 million was inclusive of the civil works and other auxiliary payments, the evacuation infrastructure were all inclusive. But that is not what the agreement says. If you look at the section uh, clause 10 of the agreement, or clause 9 even, it talks about the obligation of Ghana government to provide the infrastructure for the uh, generators. Again, in the petroleum um, um, revenue report that came out, the government has made a um, allocation of 15 million Ghana cities for the civil works at the site. So I am asking the ministry, why did you come out to tell us that the 510 was inclusive of all the civil works and all that, and the auxiliary cost and all that, evacuation infrastructure, when a provision has been made from the petroleum money, 50 million, for um, engineers and planners who are now executing the project. I was in the committee sit next, sitting next to the chief executive of um, the area. I asked him how much it was going to cost the project, the infrastructure. And he couldn't give me a, a, any figure, working so, because he didn't have it. But it was admitted, and my chairman, my vice chairman sitting there, was telling that. They told us, rightly so, that the infrastructure cost was separate from the cost of the equipment. The cost of the equipment in the agreement is laid out very clear that each equipment per month is going to cost the good people of Ghana $850,000. Each one, a ton of them, $8.5 million um, times 12, giving us... 510. Again, the, uh, the variable cost was given to us at 16.5. But all the people who know how to do this calculation, the 0 0.005 cents per kilowatt hour times two, 200 uh, 230,000 um, um, kilowatts that will give us per month, if you do that calculation, it comes to 9 point something million dollars. That is in the, in the agreement as uh, 9 by 16.6. That plus the, uh, uh, the impression given by the ministry that the 100 and 510 was inclusive of all the civil rights and other ways that have to be done makes it very contradictory. So all we are saying is that the, our petition has actually sent an urgent uh, motion to uh, Mr. Speaker, to the call for a uh, call parliament, to allow parliament to rescind the, the, the decision that was made and to give a government opportunity to have a look, another look again okay. at the figures um, so that the good people of Ghana will get value for, for money. Okay. Because the, the thing is just not right. The figures are just not right. Okay. D don't drop your line yet. Let me get uh, your vice chair yeah. uh, to quickly react. Yeah. Now, he, he's suggesting that all he's asking for is that uh, he thinks the figures aren't uh, uh, matching up and so he wants the contract brought back for uh, further uh, scrutiny. I don't think so. Because we had time, we invited them. And I think when they brought the BOT, they indicated clearly, clearly as I indicated, mm. the first item was cost of the third diver, which was $220 million. So they didn't inflate it. But the balance of plans come, came up. Then with the $15 million from Minister of Finance, mm. in, the, in the agreement, it says that the platform will be borne by Ghana. And therefore, if Minister of Finance kept it, it's in line with the agreement. I want us to agree. Have they breached the agreement in a term of the agreement? Mm. It's in line. Two, is it, if it is oil money, as the, the, the publication, I saw some publication in the papers. I just want to take something to explain. When the oil money comes, 
of them comes to the budget. Right. The minister is required by the Pop uh, Petroleum Revenue Management Act, Section 21.5, to list not more than five areas that that money that is going to the budget will be used to spend. Now, one of the items among the four is roads and other infrastructure. Mm. When you take the road and other infrastructure, the two priority areas is education and energy. It's indicated clearly. Now, that means that when the money comes, the money for roads, the other infrastructure goes to education and energy. So since 2013, where the energy money goes is for pay counterpart fund for rural electrification. So they used to pay counterpart fund so that more communities will get electricity. electricity. Mm. Now, if this item comes up, it fits directly into energy because that is a capital expenditure and it's supposed to be used for capital expenditure. So in terms of the budget, it falls within. In terms of the Petroleum Revenue Management Act, it falls within. And PR see, have uh, uh, access... Uh, 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 I'll get you the, the chance to react. Allow him to land. He's landing very soon. PIAC, because transparency and accountability is in the oil sector is very, very... There is much transparency. I know the 2015 report of PIAC will definitely report it. So I don't see anything wrong if the agreement says that you use your money to construct the platform. Mm. And actually it's been used. And because somebody issued a statement, that is contradictory. Let me get him to react. Uh, oh no, but so uh, uh, he, yeah. I'm sure you, you, you want to react to some of the issues he raised. Yeah. Basically, all I'm asking, the statement that was put up by the ministry sought to create the impression that the 510 was not just for the equipment and that it, include, it was inclusive of all the civil works. So why, I'm asking, should we be paying 15 million from the petroleum money and then somebody comes back to say that, oh, the 510 is also inclusive, so we are paying double for the civil work that is being done. Mm. We are paying double for the evacuation infrastructure and all that. That is where I am saying that there are some contradictions. With the, the figures. Finance is saying that oh, yes. Okay, so... Uh, 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 I Okay, hold on, but just hold on a, a minute. So, uh, now, so this is his, his argument. 510, and you said it's for the works. Now, there's another 15 million, as you said, uh, from the oil uh, man that, that is being used. How do you balance the figures? No, but what I'm saying is that uh, under the agreement, mm. the civil work, that is the platform, right. is supposed to be borne by government. So, you are saying that it's not that part is, of the 510? No, that one, gov the 510 is not money we have paid. Right. Okay. We are taking Let's the equipment, the they will run it for five years, right. and from the tariffs, mm. they recoup their investment. Great. So nobody should see it like we have paid $510 million up front. However, government was to provide for the platform. So that means we have to use our money to, to provide pay, the to, platform. To provide it. And that is the, where the $50 million uh, uh, Honorable, uh, 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 is. Honorable... F 50 million uh, Ghana uh, do, is, is, is that Ghana something that you think uh, it should be understood by all? Excuse me, could you say that again? I'm asking that he, uh, the vice chair of the committee is saying that the, the contract says the platform, the construction of the platform is to be borne by the government of the Republic of Ghana. And so yeah, we yeah, needed to use yeah. our own money to do it and not part of uh, the 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 whole amount that but that is not what the ministry statement that came out said the ministry statement that came out is trying to convince many that the money is so much because it includes all other things but if you look in the contract okay. it says that the government is to provide the infrastructure in any case you know that the, the, the generators are coming on trailers mm. so all you need is just concrete work, so concrete in, for the trailers to be parked there. And government told us by the Ministry of Finance that they paid 15 million Ghana cities. And then the spokesperson from the ministry comes back with a statement signed by my good friend, the minister, that the 510 is our problem, basically, that that money mm. is just too much. The 510 is just too much. The variable cost that they, uh, they are asking us to pay 16.6 million is straight. Uh, it's obviously wrong. It should be $9.9 .9 million. 
if you build a simple calculation using the okay. let me, uh, let me, uh, okay. let me react I, I, to the system with the variable cost right. before we wrap up okay we've said this you know it, i must say this that's not the first and some people might say why have you waited all this while to come and say this we said this we pointed it out we told them that the calculations were not right and that we should give um parliament time to look at this and then they pulled their way through as, as, as always it had to take a foreign journalist to come um, and polish exactly what you have, you have been saying before mm -hmm. Ghanaians um, and you know, yourselves uh, took it seriously for okay. Ghanaians or most Ghanaians to know about it. All Basically, right. all we are saying that we've been vindicated that we could have purchased these machines much cheaper than the price that we are being, we are being given to. That plus the people surrounding, I mean, the other parties who signed the contract with the government, the now since I have some information has come out that some people were not right, that they were correct people uh, that we could have done business with. Plus the figures all make all right. it necessary for Ghanaians to rescind this um, uh, the parliament to rescind this decision so that government will have the opportunity to have another chair a bite at the chair. Okay. So that's what we're asking for. All right. Honorable, I'm grateful for your time tonight. Uh, he's a member of parliament for Fija Kwabe North constituency, William Oriku Edu Ver. Let me come back to let you. Me, so let you, me. you wanted to react, Thank particularly the, 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 uh, the 60 million The 60 million is a variable. When they say variable means it's not fixed. Right. In the petroleum price build, uh, the tariff build up, we have the uh, recoverable charge, which will recover the cost of the building. We have the fixed O and M, that is op operation and uh, maintenance. Mm. They, are, they are fixed. But we have variable O and M. That will depend cost of well. So if you go and use, if the price of well now, $38, you won't get sustained. If the price of well, uh, uh, crude, goes to 140 you get probably more than, uh, more than the sustained. So we have to be very careful. The variable used at that time but you know that it's going to operate. So as the price drop, that variable co uh, amount will de de So nobody should think that it's just fixed. No, it is not fixed. Can it depends on the operation. Let's wrap up you know? our conversation. Can we ever, can the public ever understand this? Or perhaps more need to be done to get the public to understand what really is the problem? The first thing the public as an, uh, as an MP, mm. And the technicality of certain things is that we must begin to see what is BOOT. In advanced countries, they have done it for a long time. Somebody can just come and say, motorway, I want to construct six lanes mm. and mount the tools for this number of years. After that, I hand it over to government of Ghana. I know some institutions in Ghana who they are doing it. You want to build a hostel, they will give you the land you build. They give you some number of years. You recover your cost and profit. And then you hand over the infrastructure to them. It's a sure way, another way of accumulating assets right. without initial expenditure. And I think we need to actually explain between BOOT, how the transactions are run, and where you have money to go and buy. I think that is the way we have a problem. People don't see the reason why. You have money, BOT. That's why I was relating to high purchase. Mm. And then when you have your own money, or you go to borrow from the bank to pay, buy something. I'm grateful. Uh, he's the vice chair of Parliament's Mines and Energy Committee, uh, Honorable Adam Mutawakilo. I'm grateful once again for your time I'm tonight, and thanks so much for thank accepting to much. come to the studios. When we come back, we'll tell you that uh, the NPP's campaign team for next year's elections uh, will be uh, made known over the weekend. Stay there. We're coming back.